Hello, everyone. Welcome to Behind the Mic. Obviously, always a special edition when it's Lafayette Lehigh, number 158. Mike and I, like you, are really looking forward to Saturday's football game. The two teams come in, kind of equal records, both of them two and three in the Patriot League. And uh, Mike, under Tom Gilmore, of course, uh, Lehigh has been okay, but they, yeah. they have not uh, set the world on fire. And John Troxel looking to get a really big uh, win for him in his first Lafayette Lehigh game as a head coach. So there's some things I want to talk about. We'll just go down the list. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at Saturday. Lehigh wins the ball game in the last 22 seconds over Colgate. A big win for them, a good win for them. We lay an egg. Probably the worst defensive game we've played all year. We did not play well offensively. Is there any hangover going into Saturday from those two results? Um, I think it's more on the Lehigh side you're going to get no hangover. I think they're going to be totally excited. Obviously, they beat a Colgate team who is really tough coming down here, and they did it through the air, which they normally do. Throwing for over 400 yards, Dante Perry was good in our game last year. He was terrific yesterday. I think that's only going to build up their emotion coming over here to Lafayette to play, so I think it's a positive for them. For Lafayette, is there a little bit of a hangover? You can't let it. You can't, just can't let it. you got to put it behind you. But it was, like I said, disappointing on the defensive end from a standpoint of you know what to expect from team, uh, Tim DeMarat. You know what to expect from their wide receivers. But Lafayette had no pass rush. They didn't get home. They didn't interrupt. They didn't make him move his feet like we talked about on inside the huddle. So they really let him do whatever he wanted to do. And then, obviously, we know the struggles of the Lafayette offense. So um, from a hangover standpoint, we hope Lafayette can put it behind him and understand this is game 150. This is the most important game of the year right now for them. Uh, but for Lehigh, it's got to be riding high. Yeah, no question about it. You mentioned uh, the offenses. Uh, is this going to be a really low-scoring game? Lehigh, don't, no, neither team gets 20 points a game. Lehigh gets 17.8. Lafayette at 12.5. So it's kind of looking like a 17-14 type football game. Is that what you're expecting? Um, I am expecting that. I mean, if you look at the last three or four games that we played, 17-10, 17-14, 14-10, I mean, these are two offenses that have been struggling for years right now. They just don't have, and I wouldn't say they struggle. They have weapons. They just don't have consistency. And, and I don't think they have the consistency up front on the offensive line. And that's a big thing Lafayette is going to have to look uh, at in the offseason. And Lehigh as well. If you cannot keep your quarterback upright, you can't keep him in one spot like Fordham does, mm -hmm. like Holy Cross does, if you don't do those type of things, things um, you're going to struggle and if you look at the Patriot League it's kind of odd because the Holy Cross uh, and Fordham are 18 and 2 overall okay and and overall both and both ranked the rest of the teams are 11 and 37 what's going on right there that that has that's a little odd to me so both of those teams have strong offensive line play Lafayette and Lehigh do not. So which team's going to show up up front with the scheme that works? Is Lafayette going to run the football? Look at the guys in the past that have run the football well at Lafayette and won the game. Ross Sherman, obviously. Mm -hmm. Joe McCord. Uh, you know, Bruce McIntyre. Tommy Costello. Eric Marsh. When we win this game, we run the football, and I think that's the key. Well, it leads to my next point. When you look at the rushing games of the two teams, Lehigh is the better rushing team. They've outrush us by 83 yards a game. But we are the better defensive team yeah. by about 100 yards per game. Yeah. So it's uh, immovable force against immovable force. Who wins it? Yeah, I think Lafayette's defensive front seven, which is the strength of their team, will show up. Mm -hmm. And that, that to me is the difference to stop Garcia. Make them one-dimensional and then get after the pat after uh, Dante Perry and get him again. He's not a big runner, um, but he's got some really good weapons. He's got guys that have just stepped up. Johnson just in the last week, a bunch of catches. Uh, but again, it goes back to fundamentals: stop the run, stop Garcia. Mm -hmm. He's a good one. He's a transfer from Michigan. He's got good size. He's got that um, Dom Bragalone kind of size to him. Yeah. So you got to stop that. And on the offensive side for Lafayette, you got to take Jaden Sutton and cut him loose. This is a game where I think he thrives. Um, you look back at Selwyn Simpson the, the, mm -hmm. when he had uh, confidence. Get him going downhill. That standstill stop, stutter type stuff we're going to talk about on Inside the Huddle. Get him going downhill and use that 235-pound body. Both offensive lines have been beat up this year. Uh, Lehigh's offensive line, too, is a restructured one because of injuries. Lafayette, the exact same way. One thing they haven't been able to do is protect the quarterback. 19 sacks, Lehigh's given up. We've given up 39 sacks. That's going to be a huge key to this football game. We can keep a Sean Davis upright and able to throw the ball. Uh, Sean's got all the skills to be a great quarterback if you keep him upright. And just lately, you've seen that he can actually escape. Mm -hmm. He can run the football. He can do those things. He did that in the second half against Fordham a little bit. But like you said, 39 sacks is, is just outrageous. If you go back to last year, there were 45. So they have 84 sacks 
twice in the last two years. You can't win ball games like that. And again, that goes back to the offense and defensive line. Which team's going to be able to protect the quarterback? And I think the way you do that is through running the football and play action. But this is close. We keep going back and forth. Mm -hmm. Both teams have similar issues. Both teams got to now. Does it come down to emotion and effort and intensity and 60 minutes of play? Usually does in this football game. Yeah. Defensively, two outstanding linebackers. Mike Danucci for Lehigh, terrific football player. Obviously, Marco Olivas, terrific football player. Uh, but our defense has to play better if we're going to win. Yeah, and it starts with the front four. And I'm putting a lot of onus on Malik Cam. I'm putting it on Jair Stevens. I'm putting it on Damon Washington. I'm putting on those guys up front to keep people off of Marco. Allow Marco to play in space where he's so good. Downhill running, sideline to sideline, get into zones. Remember, he had his first interception a couple of years ago against mm -hmm. Lehigh. If he can play in space and he can do those type of things and and, and, and be the guy that you need him to be and not be just a, a guy that's going to fill holes. I mean, he can be great, but it goes, starts with those up front guys. I mean, Malik Ham did not have a very good game last week. It's been a little quiet. You know what? And I'm here putting it on Malik. Let's go. It's time. It's your last game. Let's, let's rock and roll. And, of course, it always centers around the special teams, and they have not been good for us. We've had six block punts. We've had a blocked uh, field goal this season. Special teams have not been good, but, boy, they did look better punting the football on Saturday. Billy Schaefer's back snapping the ball. What a huge difference when he gets the ball back there. Oh, absolutely, and he's not just a force defensively, but like you said, on special teams, and you texted me during the game, and, boy, what a difference it makes, and gets the ball out, puts a little confidence in your punter, gets him to do a little bit of rugby kick, and they average over 43 yards a punt, and actually pinned Fordham in a couple mm -hmm. times after a few penalties, but the defense gave it up on the first second play. So Billy Schaefer makes a huge difference, but these special teams, you cannot look at last year. The punt block was the whole game right, right there at the end of the half. Lafayette needs to find a way to finish halves and finish games. They haven't done it all season. The last four minutes I talk about coming out of half, going into half. If you get that double possession, you've got to take advantage of it. You can't put the ball back in Tante Perry's hands for three minutes at the end of the first half after you score. You look at Lafayette, they get the field goal on the board. They come right back against Fordham. And they give up the touchdown right before half. Instead of 17-3, it's 24-3. You've got to finish halves, and I think you've got to do that defensively. All right, the big question, our, your last question of the year. Uh, this is our final one for this season. Who wins the game? Yeah, Lafayette wins the game. They're at home, number one. That's score. the big thing. Score, Lafayette wins the game 24-13, and it's a late score, a little cover, backdoor cover by Lehigh. Um, I think Lafayette's favorite in this game because defensively you win championships on defense, and I, although I know Lehigh's defense is playing well, I think Lafayette's defense has got something to prove from last week. They're going to come out here with a lot of energy, and Mike St. Germain, mm -hmm. remember, he's played in this game. He understands this game. He's won championships in this game. He understands what it takes, and I think you'll see a few wrinkles from him. I'm guessing 24-17 in favor of the Leopards. Watch the game anyway. We're not usually right. So uh, we certainly uh, want to thank you for joining us every week for Inside the Huddle. Make sure you, again, you take a look at, uh, at Mike as he uh, goes inside the huddle. Uh, and we are behind the mic, of course. So for Mike, I'm Gary. Thanks so much. Join us 1230 for game number 158 on Saturday afternoon.